Hello, welcome to the first video on magnetism. Uh, so this video, we're just going to go over some of the um, some of the main like phenomenal phenomenological things. So just some experiments that show what magnetism is all about. Uh, so we're not going to get too much into equations. Uh, I think there's one that I want to show, but that's about it. Um, next video, we'll, and then then we'll start to try and get quantitative. So the next video will be about the cross product, just some reminders, or you know, if you've never seen it in a uh, math class before, you know, some introduction to that. And then we can go and talk about the Biot-Savart law in more detail. So I'll be the, the third video in these first two videos on magnetism. Um, so I want to talk about each of these uh, experiments one by one. So I'll, I'll circle the one that I'm talking about. Uh, so the first thing is that uh, there are certain um, things that you can find. Uh, thousands of years ago, people would collect things. That there were some things that if you uh, if you were able to remove friction, so so like if you just put it on the ground, uh, there's too much friction between the ground. But if you're able to, and this is why uh, we talk about putting the material on a piece of cork and then putting it in some water, so that there's very little resistance to it twisting around. Uh, there were some materials that would tend to line up, all line up in the in, a, in the same direction, um, and that would be. Uh, tend to be near like geographical north. So one side of the, the um, like if you took a thin strip of this, one side of it would be towards the north and one side towards the south. So they would all tend to line up in a certain in a special direction. All right, so this is kind of weird. Um, you know, no electric field present or anything. So so nothing from previously that, that, that could explain this. You know, you put this thing next to some charges and it's not attracted or repelled at all. So, so totally separate from what, what we've been talking about so far. Uh, if you took two such things uh, that tended to line up, so you, you you test both of these on cork, and then you, so you, you could also assign a direction, right? So, so this side, you label with, you know, the side that's attracted to the north and the, the, that, the side that's attracted to the south. So label the piece of the material, the north side and the south side. Um, so you take two of these things, uh, this is experiment two now, you take two of these things, if you try and put the two north sides together, the two pieces, the two magnets repel each other. And if you put the two opposite sides together, they tend to attract each other, All right? Um, so experiment three is just that a compass needle itself is a magnet. Um, so uh, I, I guess this is obvious. I, I thought this is obvious from the first experiment. So the first experiment says that some pieces can be used as a compass needle. Uh, so experiment three is just kind of repeating that, I think. This is sort of a weird one. Um, experiment four says that if you cut this magnet in half, you get two smaller magnets. So you can't just isolate the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh, you actually get two magnets that act exactly the same as this. So if you cut it in half and then you turn one of the pieces around, the, this thing will repel each other. No matter how much you cut it up, cut it in half, this, this happens. It starts to get, the, the attraction gets weaker and weaker uh, as you split it up. And we'll maybe be able to, to see why by the end of this chapter. Uh, but this is sort of a weird thing, and this didn't occur with uh, magnetism, right? Like, right? Or so, sorry, <laughs> this didn't occur with uh, electricity. Um, like, if you had a minus charge and a plus charge, you could cut it in half and actually get a minus charge by itself and a plus charge by itself. So, so this is something different from what we've seen before. Um, experiment five says that uh, there are these objects that are permanent magnets, and you could take. A permanent magnet and actually attract some objects. So some objects are more strongly attracted to magnets than not. So a paper clip is an object that perhaps it's not initially magnetized. So you put it on cork and it doesn't tend to favor the north or the south pole, but you can, but it's still attracted to a permanent magnet, either side, either the north pole or the or the south pole. And it turns out the, the types of objects that uh, for which this happens at room temperature, they, they tend to be made of iron, nickel, or cobalt. There's something special about those three elements that other elements don't seem to have. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that too later. Uh, and then this is something I've alluded to before, like a magnet doesn't has no effect on a conductor, which is very different from charges, right? A charge would definitely be attracted to the metal, to a metal conductor, no matter what the charge was. But this is how we know it's something different, right? That no matter what, like we see no effect of this magnet in the, the metal. Um, so one thing about poles, um, North Pole and South Pole. So if you had a magnet, uh, North Pole and South Pole. So the North Pole is the one that is 
the like if you if you put it on the cork and then put it in water, the North Pole is the one that's attracted to the geographic north. Um, so with that, but we also saw that the North Pole is attracted to a South Pole. So what this means is that the Earth itself acts acts like a big bar magnet, but the geographic North Pole. So this is where Santa and the elves are and polar bears and all that. Um, so the geographic North Pole is basically a magnetic South Pole. So that's why there's this S and N for this uh, this magnet. And furthermore, it's it's uh, the magnet doesn't perfectly line up with the geographic North Pole and South Pole. So the magnetic South Pole is close to the geographic North Pole, but not exactly there. So that's why it's displaced a little bit. And it's not displaced exactly 23 degrees, like the angle of the, the Earth's rotation. It's just kind of a, it's maybe closer to like 10 degrees and it kind of meanders over time. Uh, a little bit quicker than the precession of the Earth, so it's kind of a weird thing going on. And there, are, there are models for why this is. Uh, probably the um, probably charges in the Earth's uh, inner outer core, I think outer core, uh, that are responsible for this. But it's, it's very it, there's a lot we don't know about it. Um, that's the, our best guess for it right now. Um, okay, so. So again, we're going to describe what's going on with a field. Just like we talked about electric field, we're going to say there's a new field going on uh, that, like when you have this thing, there's going to be field lines that describe the behavior of this bar magnet. So they're going to go from the North Pole to the South Pole. Uh, and something like this, they start on the North Pole and they end on South Poles. Um, and we call this the magnetic field. So we label it. We label it with a B. And the magnetic field is the direction that, like, if you put a compass here, so now if I put a compass here, the needle is going to line up with the magnetic field direction. So that, descri that, that describes all of these experiments. You know, we want to build a, a model that will be able to explain everything we're, we're seeing. So a compass needle will point in the direction of the magnetic field. So a compass needle, it looks like your book is using the red side to denote the north side of the compass. Uh, so if uh, so forget this charged rod right here. Uh, it, it looks like this might be placed in a magnetic field that's pointing up. That's the direction that the uh, that, that compass needle would want to line up. So it lines up so that from south to north, that's the same direction as the magnetic field. Uh, and we'll talk about this a little later with magnetic moments. This compass needle itself is a magnetic moment, kind of similar to uh, dipole moments that we talked about with electric fields. Uh, another interesting fact on the way the way that uh, this was discovered. Um, or, so, so that was uh, a lot of these facts about magnets were known for uh, hundreds, thousands of years. Um, but the fact that they're related to charges, uh, charged particles moving, was just discovered, you know, a few hundred years ago, just in the early 1800s. So uh, a, a current carrying wire will deflect a magnetic, or sorry, will deflect compass needles that are around it. So if you put a bunch of different compass needles around, surrounding a wire, so what happens is that if the, if the current's going this way, the magnetic field lines are just kind of curling around this direction. So the magnetic field is going in this direction in circles around that wire, which, di which explains the direction of the magnetic comp uh, So if you put a compass here, the, the, the way it's going to line up is tangent to that circle at that point. So you take, so you draw a line like from the, um, from the current carrying wire out to the compass needle, and then the direction of the magnetic field is perpendicular to that, and also perpendicular to the direction of the current. So this is going to be a little tougher to describe mathematically because uh, there's definitely three dimensions going on, right? There's the dimension of the current carrying wire, there's this direction, and then the direction that the compass needle is actually pointing. And all three of those are perpendicular to one another here for this picture. Um, so that's the gist of this. and. Uh, that's basically the end of, of that section. Um, this we're going to talk about more quantitatively next time. Um, but there's one thing. I, so this is called the Bio Savar law, but we're going to write it in a way that involves the cross product. So so we'll wait a couple of uh, videos to talk about this quantitatively. One thing I want to point out though is that okay, so you, you, uh, a current is made up of a bunch of charged particles moving. So we can try and isolate what causes the magnetic field by just focusing on one single charge. So a single positive charge has creates a magnetic field that looks like this. This might be the best picture to describe what's going on. So uh, there's like a line of sight of the uh, charge 
where the charge came from and where it's going. So just draw a straight line like that. And then the magnetic field is circles that surround this line. So it's kind of interesting because the, the charge particle is here. And even if you look at a point over there, uh, like the R hat vector would be pointing from the source to the point of interest. So this would be R hat, but the, the magnetic field doesn't point in that direction or even, well, it is perpendicular to that direction, we'll, we'll, we'll discover. But probably the easiest way to describe it is you know, draw this line first and then there are circles surrounding that. Uh, and it's perpendicular to that. So, so this is what the, this picture tries to do. It says, well, you have the R vector and you have the direction of motion and that defines a plane. Uh, and the magnetic field is up at any point is perpendicular to that plane uh, in a direction determined by the right hand rule. So we'll talk about that uh, later as well. Two things we need to talk about right away though, uh, the units of the magnetic field. Um, and there's this constant associated with it too. So uh, there's some history behind this, but basically if you have two current carrying wires, uh, and we'll talk about this later, but two current carrying wires will attract each other. So basically one of them will create a magnetic field. The magnetic field will, uh, the presence of a magnetic field here will uh, attract the wire. Um, so they, they, like scientists a couple hundred years ago said, well, well, let's just define the magnetic field to be a certain, a certain strength. So if you had like an amp here and an amp here and they're separate by a meter, we'll call that a certain uh, force of attraction. So that will help us define what, how, how strong a magnetic field is. Um, the unit that we use is called a Tesla uh, and it will be a Newton uh, per amp meter. Um, so right now, not so helpful, but uh, we'll, we'll have equations that will help us think about the, these units. Right now, what you should know is that a Tesla is a huge magnetic field. It's like the magnetic field of the Earth is pretty small, half a, uh, half a Gauss. Um, by the way, we might use the word Gauss, one Gauss, is a non-SI unit for magnetic field. One Gauss is 10 to the minus four Tesla. Um, so the strength of the magnetic field of the earth is half a Gauss, uh, you know, pr pretty small. Uh, refrigerator magnet, a couple orders of magnitude stronger than that. Uh, laboratory magnet, a few orders uh, stronger than that. And superconducting are some of the strongest magnets that we have. But, you know, strongest magnetic field ever created is still less than 100 Tesla, somewhere between 10 and 100 Tesla. Um, in describing how strong, say, the magnetic field is from this positive charge, we need a new constant called uh, this right here, the permeability of free space. Uh, so mu naught is just a constant in SI units. It's four pi times seven to the minus seven in SI units. Um, so this will be a, a number that we'll need later on when we start getting a little more quantitative. And I think this is it for this video because we want to. Uh, we'll talk about the cross product in, in the next video. Um, for this example. What is the direction of the magnetic field created by this current? So a current is a bunch of uh, positive charges that are moving this way. So whether it's a current moving this way or positive charges moving this way, you can think of it the same way. And remember the way we're going to analyze this. The For a positive charge, you just draw the line um, where, where, you know, so you have a velocity vector for the positive charge. You just draw that line. And the magnetic field is perpendicular to that. Um, so at this point, the uh, at this point right here, um, it's going to be in the direction um, so perpendicular to this line, and also in a direction determined by the right hand rule. So what this means is that you take your right hand and you grab that line that you just drew, the line of sight of that charged particle moving, uh, and you grab it so that your thumb is pointing in the direction that the positive charges are moving. So if a positive charge is moving up and to the right. Grab it so that you're grab it with your right hand so that your thumb is pointing in that direction, up and right. And what you'll find is that the uh, the magnetic field is going to be going sort of in this direction. You know, when you grab it, it the the magnetic field is pointing into the screen at that point, at point P. So magnetic field at P is into the screen. P is into the screen at point P due to the right hand rule. And the symbol that we have for into the screen is this, an X with a circle around it. That means into the paper, the piece of paper, or into the screen. Because um, we don't, you know, I'm not a very good drawer, and people would get very confused if I started to try and draw in 3D a bunch. So really, we just say we remove, you know, this sort of thing and just say, well, the magnetic field here 
is pointing into the screen right here. So you can think of this as like if you have an arrow and you look at the arrow from the back, you see these like the feathers uh, fletching or something. I forget this every year that I teach this. I forget the exact word of it. But it looks like the back click of an arrow with feathers. So like imagine an arrow going away from you. That this is what you would see the that X with the circle. And uh, totally separate from this. Uh, from this example problem, this would be the direction uh, out of the screen. So if like an arrow is coming at you, you would see the tip of the arrow. That's that's how most people remember this. So if the, if the thing's coming out of the screen towards you, you would draw this is the direction. But if it's going away from you into the screen, you would draw the X with the circle around. It. So magnetic field here, X with the circle around it. If we want another magnetic field here, it would be coming out of the page. Okay, more to come in the uh, next videos.